Creaming butter and sugar is a step you'll see in lots of cookie and cake recipes, but why do we do it and why is it so important? Well, we experimented with a lot of trials to explore this step and it was no surprise. Small changes in this step had a huge impact on the final texture of these sugar cookies. So what exactly is creaming butter and sugar? Well, it's mixing together slightly softened butter and sugar together, usually using an electric mixer. Talk to the best bakers and they'll say you need to do this for about five to eight minutes. So why do we do this? Well, there are two main reasons. First, it combines the sugar and butter into one fairly homogeneous mixture. Ideally, it all looks the same throughout, no chunks of butter or sugar. Second, it adds air. By the end of this process, there are droplets of air trapped inside the sugar and butter mixture. In many ways, this is similar to an emulsion, which is a type of mixture. So emulsions are actually pretty complicated, but at its most basic, an emulsion is a mixture of two fluids that normally don't mix, which is why we have to actually really physically mix them together to get them to mix. And ultimately, we get droplets of that one fluid dispersed throughout the other fluid. Common examples of this are whipped cream or salad dressing, which also require a lot of mixing. To study this, we creamed butter and sugar and stopped every minute, collecting a sample to study it under the microscope. And we could see those air bubbles within the mixture. Why is that air so important? Well, the amount of air affects how the cookie bakes. Cookies that are creamed properly spread out less and keep their structure. This is due to the way heat flows through air compared to other substances and ingredients. Air is a poor heat conductor, meaning it takes a lot of energy, or in this case time, for the heat to transfer through it and for the temperature of the cookie to change. When we put the cookies in the oven, they're on a metal baking sheet, which gets hot really quickly because unlike air, metal is a good heat conductor. That energy transfers to the dough because the dough is touching the baking sheet, and if the batter has a lot of air in it, well, it slows down the process at which the batter cooks, so the cookies don't spread as much. If the batter doesn't have much air, the heat will transfer more quickly and the cookies will spread out. Now it is important to note that there are other sources of heat going on here, like the actual air in the oven, which is convection, but that's for another day. Now, in addition to the time we mix the butter and sugar, the temperature of the butter is also really important. If the butter is too cold, it's difficult to incorporate air and sugar into it, and if it's too warm, it can't hold and trap those air bubbles. Most chefs recommend using butter at a temperature of 65 degrees Fahrenheit for ideal results. You should be able to push into the butter like this, which is a great way to test it out if you don't have a thermometer. Now to test this out yourself, you can make this super easy and delicious sugar cookie recipe by Tessa Porter of Handle the Heat. All you need is to cream some butter and sugar, add in an egg, an egg yolk, vanilla extract, and mix again, and then add in a mixture of flour with baking powder and salt and mix until combined. Roll each cookie dough ball in sugar and bake for 12 minutes at 350 degrees Fahrenheit. We loved this recipe because it was super simple and an easy way for us to experiment with the crucial step of creaming butter and sugar. Whether you just want to bake this recipe to practice that step or experiment with the step using this recipe, we've got you covered. Get Tessa's recipe in our bite-sized lab that aligns with the recipe below. And be sure to like and subscribe for more videos.